So let's start by looking uh, on a system which is connected to a transmission line with an impedance of a ZO, like here in this uh, image. It could be a common 50 ohm line or any other impedance like 75 ohm or around 300 ohm, uh, which is uh, in uh, the waveguide case. When looking into the system from the side of the transmission line, we will generally say measure a complex impedance with a real and imaginary part. When we use a Smith chart, we first have to normalize this impedance by dividing both the real and the imaginary parts in ZO. Now, regarding the Smith chart, the center point represents ZO. It is equal to ZO and it is right in the center. The left point marked here represents zero impedance, zero ohm impedance, as if our system is simply a shunt. The right point here represents an infinite ohm impedance as if we had an open circuit at the end of our transmission line. The circles on the Smith chart represent the real uh, part of the imp input impedance, which is the resistance. The unity circle, which is the circle that passes through the center of the Smith chart, represent the real part which is equal to ZO. Since it is normalized, then it is the unity uh, circle and the uh, resistance is equal to 1. The arcs on the Smith chart represent the reactance. The horizontal line represents the reactance zero, meaning every point along the horizontal line has a zero reactance. The upper arcs represent the positive reactance that we usually call inductive. And the lower arcs represent the negative reactance which we usually call capacitive. Now, here is an example of the input impedance 25 plus J25 ohm, which is for a 50 ohm system, meaning a system that has a transmission line of 50 ohm in its terminal. Uh, and we can say that this is the characteristic impedance of the system. The impedance, the normalized impedance would be 0.5 plus J. 0.5. In this case, we see the impedance is located on the arc 0.5 for the imaginary part and on the circle 0.5 for the real part. The reflection coefficient is the normalized vector that starts from the center of the Smith chart to the point that we have just marked. The radius of the circle whose circumference touches our impedance point and its center is located at the center of the Smith chart is the magnitude of the reflection coefficient used, for instance, to calculate the return loss. Now, here we have our 25 plus J25 ohm like before. And I ask what will happen to a, an impedance view on a Smith chart if we add ZO transmission line at its terminal and measure our system including the transmission line. The impedance image will start rotating clockwise around the center of the Smith chart. Of course, assuming we have an ideal lossless transmission line. Otherwise, the radius of the movement will change. After an eighth wavelength, the image has a, a rotated in 90 degrees, as you can see here. After quarter wavelength, 
the image has rotated 180 degrees and actually jumped to the other side of the center of the smear chart.